So should one consider living in his or her truck? All long haul truck drivers have thought about it at one point or another, where they know that they spend 25 days on the road out of the month. Does it really make sense to have your own apartment, to pay rent, to pay for that car when you're really not home 25 days out of the month? So I'm sure at some point or another, you have thought about it, or you've come to the realization that you can save all the money that you're paying for rent and a lot more. So here's what to consider when you are thinking of maybe living in that truck for a short period of time. Every situation is different. Every person has his or her own personal goals. If you're just looking to save money, I mean, why not? These trucks are equipped with a TV, with a microwave, with a fridge. A lot of the drivers have barbecues. They have coffee makers. So think about it. You actually have an apartment on wheels. Yes, I have heard of it. And yes, we do have drivers in our fleet that do live in their trucks. But there's a fine balance between living in your truck and what's healthy and what's not healthy. So we encourage all of our drivers that live in the trucks that they should every second reset come out of the truck and get themselves a motel or a hotel for their 36 hour reset. A lot of drivers take two or three days off. So why not spend two days in Nevada and another two days in Oregon somewhere in a hotel or why not do that in Florida? Take yourself three or four days off in Florida. Hell, I would do it. <laughs> But how much can you actually save? So I've actually done the math on this and just bear with me. Let me know if I'm right or if I'm wrong or I'm missing something. So on average, I would think here in the GTA and also in heavy populated areas in the US, you're looking for an average apartment of about $1,200 a month is what you could be saving just on rent alone. Now, if you got rid of the apartment, why in the world would you not get rid of the car? So your payment of about five or $600 a month, well, that also goes out the window. What about your fuel and your insurance for that? car. Well, that's at least $250 for your fuel and insurance. So now we have $1,200, we have $600, we have $250. What about the utilities for your home? At least $50? So 1,200, 600, 250, 50 for utilities. And then I'll throw another $100 because you have your Wi-Fi and your cable. So that's another $100. So let's do the quick math. 1,200 plus 600 plus 250 plus 50 plus 170. 1,250 plus 600 plus 250 plus 50. 50 plus 100. Now we're talking about 2250 per month. So if you are going to consider living in the truck, there are lots of things that you need to take into account. So number one, make it comfortable for yourself. Make sure you upgrade that mattress. You cannot stay in a truck when you have that generic mattress that comes with the trucks. Make sure you up the, upgrade that truck to something a lot more comfortable. If you are going to be in that truck, you might as well already upgrade your seat. Now make it fun for yourself. Think about it. You can only work, you can only drive 11 hours out of 24 hours. You're probably sleeping about eight or nine hours. Make sure that you're getting yourself a TV, a laptop, or even a PlayStation so you can enjoy the time that you're in the truck. Just remember and don't forget to treat yourself. Don't be stuck and trapped inside that truck for months at a time. It's not healthy and it's not healthy for you. Make sure that you're treating yourself by getting yourself a motel, getting yourself a hotel once in a while coming out of that truck. So I do know a couple of drivers and I'll, one in particular, I met him about six years ago. That driver did live in a truck for about two years. Now I asked him if he can break down the numbers. That's how I came to these numbers on how much he saved of living in that truck. But rent here in the GTA in Toronto is a lot more expensive than $1,200 a month. I mean, you won't even find a one bedroom basement today here in the GTA, Greater Toronto area for less than $1,500 or $1,700 a month. But I took the $1,200 just to be a little bit conservative here with the numbers. But he did this for about 18 months. Now he was able to save up enough money to purchase a property. Yes, he did buy it in a rural area. He bought a property for about $700,000. Now he ended up renting out the upper portion of that house. He did end up leaving himself the basement while renting out the upper portion. So here I am asking you, the audience, a question. Would you sacrifice two years of your life to become a homeowner and to have your own rental income property? for passive income? That's the question that you should be asking yourself. And what is the ultimate goal? If you're just going to live in that truck, what's the point? But if you have that goal set in front of you or that short-term goal, if you tell yourself, you know what, it's just four months or it's just six months or it's just 12 months, but have yourself that goal of why are you spending those 12 months inside that truck? What is that ultimate goal? What is it that you're trying to achieve? So hopefully you learned something from this video. If you have any comments, if you are living on the road and you have comments, if you have recommendations for other drivers that are thinking 
thinking to live on that road in the truck, leave a comment down below. Don't be shy. I'm Ronan, R-O-N-E-N. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and I'll catch you in my next video.